So, assuming that there's no other place the monsters could be at, they have to be in the lab's basement. The only entrance to it is right here. Frisk drew a tiny X on the map in front of them. Elsis had set up a plan of her old laboratory, with as much detail as possible. Now, everyone was bent over it, closely listening to Frisk. It's probably going to be locked. The key to it could be anywhere, which means we have to find a way to get Nemesis out and away from the lab. Then, someone will go in and search for the key. Once we have it, we go down there and get everyone out. That shouldn't be that hard. Don't underestimate it. We have to find a way to lure her away first. I could do that while all of you go inside and search for the key. Yo, you can't do that all alone. What if... stuff happens? I will, once again, volunteer- No, I'm doing that. But why? It's just too risky. Besides, I think I'm the only one that could even distract her for long enough. Are you really sure that you want to do this? Yes, I'm sure. But what if something goes wrong? In what way? Like, you know, uh... Never mind. It's probably gonna be fine. It's you after all. I totally trust you, dude. So, all we'd have to do is, uh, just search for the k k key? That's the plan, but it would make it easier if we knew exactly where the key was, of course. I don't know how long I can distract Nemesis. In fact, I don't know if I can even manage to get her away from the lab at all. So, we need another plan? C can't we just sneak by and s somehow break down the d door? It's your lab. Can we break down the door? Uh... Forget I said anything. <laughs> Is there any other way to get inside without being noticed? We could set up a trap for the human and capture them. Like the old days. How would that work? It would work the way it worked on you, too. I will make my spaghetti, serve it on the finest plate we can find, put it in the middle of Heartland, and then we can put up signs leading to it. The human will be so focused on searching for it that they will completely forget what they were here for in the first place. That would also solve the debate about whether or not you can distract them for long enough. Uh... Yo, that really worked on you, Frisk? Just spaghetti? Let's not talk about those times. Besides, we're changing the subject. We have to focus more. Oh yeah, sorry dude. A trap could also work, but despite everything, I don't want her to get hurt, okay guys? I'm sure she can change if we just talk to her and listen to what she has to say. I have quite a few ideas for all kinds of trap designs. We could make a spaghetti trap. A spaghetti trap where the spaghetti is trapped and the human has to free it from the trap. Or we could trap the human in the trap and make the spaghetti from the previous trap free the trap human from the trap. Or we just kindly ask the human to get inside our prison. We have a prison? Why, yes! In Snowden, right next to my house! You mean your... garage? No, I'm talking about the prison! The one in your garage. Again, no. Don't you remember the prison? But that was just your garage. You can walk out of it without any efforts. Forcing people to stay somewhere is rude. So of course anyone can leave our prison. Yo guys, this is totally confusing me. Me too, Monster Kid. Sorry, but I think we need another plan. Alphys, Nastabook, any ideas? Well, if we somehow manage to get her in a certain area that still has force fields, we c can trap her there. But, but that w would mean that I'd have to g get the, uh, the remote f for the force fields. I left it in the lab back when we moved to the surface. We can't get to that remote. Any other ideas? Well, uh, I can kind of get in the basement without anyone noticing. How? Well, I'm a ghost, so I can, uh, just fade away and go there. Oh, right. Why didn't you say this earlier? Sorry, I just... Uh, you would have saved us a lot of time in talking if you would have mentioned this earlier. I just thought it wouldn't be useful. I think it w was everyone's fault. We all could have thought of that. It's never my fault. Uh, maybe just a bit, but not as much as everybody else's fault. 
I'm sorry. It's fine, now we know. Now, Spook, you have to get into the lab and then you have to talk to everyone. Tell them we're here and that we're going to get them out somehow. Oh, um, I don't know if I can, but, uh, if you want me to try. Yes, definitely. Okay, so, do I go right now? If you think you're ready, of course. Well, wait, I can, uh, give you some tips on how to pick locks. I especially those d down there, in case you don't find the key. Actually, you should free them. We need a better plan before that. You think Nemesis would have noticed a dozen monsters walking around the lab and out the door? It's too dangerous. And safety comes first! Oh, oh. Sorry again. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Nap Spook, if you're ready, you can go. We'll stay here and wait for you to come back. All right. With that, the ghost faded away. He hurried through the empty cave's halls, trying to reach the lab as fast as possible. Once he got there, he was surprised to see that all lights inside the building had been turned off. Everything was neatly cleaned and organized, as if the girl had been living here for quite some time. But Nepsibluk decided not to waste any time, and looked for the door that led downstairs. He remembered where it was on Frisk's map, and soon found it. Behind it was not a staircase, but instead an old elevator. He moved down the shaft until he reached a door that led to a dark corridor. There was no light at all, so it was hard to see. On the walls were a few dark, dusty monitors that turned on the moment he passed them. He ignored them and continued his search. He came across a few rooms, but all of them were empty. As he was about to give up and go back, he saw another hallway he had missed before. It was just as dark and dusty as the other ones, but something was different. Although hard to see in the darkness, Napsible could just barely make out the footprints that ran down the hall. Excited, he hurried up and ran the corner, to find himself in yet another room, this time bigger. He looked around and froze. Hello? Uh, guys? Me Metaton? A few beds were lined up at the room's far end, but those weren't the reason the ghost was paralyzed. Right in front of him were figures, lifeless, still figures, staring at nothing. He would have thought he ran into a collection of dolls. If only their faces wouldn't have been so familiar. Ask who? Can you? Anyone? Can anyone hear me? Hello? Floating around the rows of missing monsters, he examined every one of them closely. Yes. These were for sure their friends. Sans, Undyne, Metaton, Asgore, everyone they had been looking for, as well as a few new faces. After another failed try to get a reaction out of anyone, he returned to Waterfall. Napsaluk, you scared me to death. Did you see them? I, uh, uh, oh no, oh no. Is Undyne alright? Is Sans alright too? And what about Asgore? It's... Yo, we're all forgetting the Temmies. What about them? I... I... Guys, leave him his space. Nepsu will calm down first and then tell us about it. It's just I... Did you talk to them? I... I tried... Oh no. Did you get caught? No. I... I think... Okay, good. Now calm down and tell us what exactly happened. I... went down there and... At first, I... I saw no one, b b but when I was about to come back, I noticed another hallway, and then there was that room. Uh, everyone's there. Uh, there's far more than, uh, about, about 25 people. I, s I saw everyone. But... Frisk? Yeah? S somehow... Somehow Toriel is... There too. Toriel? Yes. 
Sorry, I... Oh. Did you talk to her? Is she fine? That's why she didn't answer my phone calls. I tried, but... How'd she get here so fast? Frisk, when's the last time you talked to Tutorial? That was before we entered the underground, I think. How long ago was that? Two, three days ago? I can hardly keep track of time down here. Guys, listen, I... Oh, right. Sorry, Nest Luke. Anyways, is she fine? That's what I'm trying to tell you. I couldn't talk to anyone. Why not? They're kind of not there. What do you mean they're not there? But you said you saw them. I meant like it's like they're hypnotized. No. No, it makes sense. That's why you shouldn't look at spinning objects for too long. Nothing was spinning. It was just... nothing. They were just standing there as if... as if... they... they... So, so that kid wasn't lying? We have to... be careful. If she can do that, my controlling hypnosis thing... Then there is no guarantee that we wouldn't be affected by it. Tinfoil helmets can prevent that from happening. Maybe. Like the ones they use during alien invasions? Correct! Maybe the human learned how to do that from aliens. I just realized I wasn't too far off when I guessed that the missing monsters were a uh, Possessed? Or controlled? Do tinfoil helmets prevent spooky possessions? I... don't know? I'm still saying we should wear them, just in case we meet some friendly aliens that want to possess us. T technically tinfoil hats c can't save you from anything. I, uh, don't really know about that kind of stuff. But, but I'm pretty sure that putting shiny foil on your head could, can't protect you. Unless you're in a science fiction movie. If only this was some kind of movie. Everything would be fine and you know the good guys would win and nobody's gonna get hurt. I... Screw this. I'm going there right now. You said yourself that we need a plan first. This is my plan now. Frisk, wait! That's a b bad idea! But Frisk wasn't listening to them anymore. They already started running towards Hotland. After some time, Monster Kid caught up with them. <sighs> Frisk, come on, dude. You, you can't just do that now. Frisk didn't look at their friend. S stop ignoring me. You can't go there on your own. They have to. No, you don't. Why do you think that? Answer, dude. Once Frisk stopped, Monster Kid was able to see that they were crying. Toriel was all I have when I was a kid. She's the only family I ever had. I won't let anything happen to her. And if this girl thinks she can just do what she wants without any consequences, then she's wrong. But, but you're acting without thinking. You've wasted too much time already. Please, go back. I have to do this on my own. There's too much at stake. Without another word, Frisk left Monster Kid alone. After crossing through Waterfall, Frisk found themselves back in front of the lab. It seemed even more ominous now that they were alone. They took a deep breath and knocked on the door. Why am I even knocking? After a few seconds, the sliding door opened. The room behind it was dark. Frisk entered and looked around. Nemesis was sitting on the empty work desk, smiling at Frisk. Back again, I see. I'm glad that you've made your choice. I have. My choice is to fight for what I love. <laughs> you have to be kidding me. I'm not. I won't reset. Never, ever again. But nobody is happy this way. Sure, monsters are back on the surface. They can see the light again, the stars, blah blah. But is life really worth living if nobody accepts you for who you are? 
Yes, it is. Because we have each other. The monsters are the nicest and most lovable people I've ever met, and I would give my life for them. Speaking of which, what would you do if you had no choice whether to reset or not? Let's say, if you were stuck on a so-called game over screen for all eternity. Are you threatening me? Oh, no. I'm just asking questions. Well, now it's my time to ask questions. Why are you doing this? I thought I've told you before. Monsters are freaks. Freaks belong in a cage. Why don't you even give them a chance? They had their chance, back before the war broke out. But they chose to start a fight for no reason. I call this payback. That was so long ago. Why does this mean so much to you? Just because it was long ago doesn't mean it didn't happen. Do you forget about all the mistakes someone made just because time has passed? Yes, I do. Because I believe that people can change and be better. And so can you. Ha ha ha. You're way too funny. I've made my decision. And so have I. You're risking a fight because you're too scared to press one stupid button? Yup. <laughs> You really are an idiot. Nemesis slid down from the table and shrugged. Less talking makes things easier for me. So do you- Before she could finish her sentence, the door got kicked in. <laughs> what, what are, are you, you doing, doing here? here? Excuse me for your door, but it just wouldn't open. Frisk, we're here for you. I told you I could do this myself. But we're a team. We support you. How nice to see that everyone's come together to visit me. Five in one fell swoop. Guys, get out of here! Before any of them could do anything, the door frame was blocked by a wall of blue fire. They turned around to face Nemesis, whose eyes were gleaming in the flickering light. A crackling, flashing ball was forming between her hands. She launched it at the team, but they were blinded by the light. Before everything went dark, her eyes met Frisk's one last time. I've got you now. <laughs>